Is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Is an anime. That is a review of the first season. It's based off a series of light novels. It follows the story of Bell Cranell. He is a low-level adventurer. And in this world of Aurora Roria, uh, basically the Greek gods have come down from the, uh, their pantheon. Uh, and they, uh, they live among society. They have familias. They basically have, you know, like people who worship them, I guess, and sort of give them, I don't know if they give them money or anything, but they basically support certain gods. So some gods have really big familias, like guilds of sorts. So Bell is a low-level adventurer who almost gets killed one day uh, because a giant supersized monster from a lower level managed to get up to him and he gets saved by a beautiful sword woman named Ice Wallenstein. So Bell is immediately enamored by her and um, but he's really weak and uh, everyone keeps saying that you know you're like uh, you've only been adventuring for about a month how are you going to you know catch the woo the attention of this uh, badass sword lady so he gets blessed with the uh, power to become a little bit better from his own goddess, Hestia. And then he starts working towards his goal of basically becoming on her level so he can gain her respect and then become her lover, I guess. So let's start with what I liked about this series. Um, the animation is really great for one thing. The action sequences are really, really well done. There's this fight with a minotaur that's just breathtaking and the final battle for the season finale is really great. Um, there's a lot of colorful characters. Uh, it's a you know easy breezy fantasy story, and uh, pacing's pretty good too. Um, but that's about it. Let's get into what I didn't like. Um, the world building's a little bit fractured. There's like this giant tower thing sitting in the middle of the town. They don't explain what it is, but there's a dungeon underneath where like most of the economy comes from. Adventurers can go down there. You get, the deeper you go into the dungeon, the harder the monsters, the more frequency, the bigger it is. Uh, and you kill the creatures, you get like these magic stones that you can trade for money at the bank. So I, the entire economy is based off of this. So, you know, there are people that run the restaurants and inns, I guess they get money from adventures only. But they don't explain like the purpose of this dungeon or where it comes from or is it part of the underworld because the tower that goes up into the sky is basically uh, full of like shops and stuff and the gods um, run businesses out of it and it goes all the way to the sky. So, and also the villains. The villains uh, are sort of like shadowy people that sort of stick to the background and move strings around. They don't get any confrontations. And um, there's also a, a really weak motivation for the main character, Bell. He basically wants to be an adventurer because his grandfather was killed by a monster. But they don't explain how that happens. I thought monsters only appear in dungeons. So like, how did a monster get out? and attack him on a farm. And then uh, his second motivation, of course, is to you know, catch the attention of Ice Wallenstein. That's not a really great motivation. That's like saying, uh, I gotta go to the gym and get strong so I can flirt with that girl at the gym. It's, it's kind of a weak motivation. And there's a good amount of characters in this story. There's uh, Belle, there's his goddess um, Hestia. There's a um, blacksmith, a supporter, some rivals, things like that. The coolest character is actually a side character that you don't even know about till the end. Totally badass. In two minutes, you get enough um, backstory for her to be one of the most interesting characters of the entire cast. Meanwhile, Ice Wallenstein, the uh, object of our main character's affection, she gets no character development. She's, you know, kind of stiff and she's really good at sword play, but you don't really get much more out of her. But however, the second season came out in 2019, so I'm hoping they develop her character a little bit more. Uh, other than that, though, um, it's kind of like a undemanding, easy to get into fantasy. I, I liked how it wasn't an isekai, though. It's not like a, he is, a, you know, from our world going into. It's just a straight up fantasy. He's just really weak, and then he starts to slowly get better because he has goals. And it's a little bit simplistic at times. But um, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon, or also known as Danmachi or Familia Myth? Is uh, you know, it's an easygoing sort of um, anime that's not too hard to get into. I think they're planning a third season. Also, I didn't like the tonal shifts. That's another thing I forgot to mention. The series starts off as kind of like a, he's a plucky adventurer, you know, comedy, but then it gets kind of serious in the middle. And then sometimes the, the show will jump back and forth between violent and funny, and it's kind of like jarring, which is a little weird, but you know, something you have to get used to. Uh, so overall, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon season one? 
it's it's an okay show. It's I wouldn't consider it a must watch. There are better fantasy shows out there like Lock Horizon, Claymore, you know, things like that. Um, this one is a middle of the pack, middle of the road kind of. You can watch it if you're bored. There are more seasons coming out, so there is a purpose for wanting to watch it. I, I found myself chuckling a little bit, but it's not a series that I absolutely love. So that's what I feel about uh, Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, Season 1.